All right, guys, I'm going to go over a common problem that I see in people's Kongs today and how to fix it, and that is when and how to dip. So this isn't going to be a full Kong tutorial. Uh, I've already written out a pretty detailed guideline a couple years ago uh, for proper Kong technique and how to get maximum power, and that's up on the Rollerhops website. I can link it below. All right, so first I'm going to break down the wrong way to go into your dip and all the problems it causes, and then I'm going to go break down the right way to dip and all the advantages it has, and then I'll give you examples of both. Alright, so what a lot of people do is coming into their Kong, coming off of the third to last step going into the penultimate, they kind of just hop through the air and they stay really high, and then they land on the second to last step and then start to dip, and then immediately have to come back up on the last step, and that looks like this. So they'll be coming here, They'll be on the third to last step. They'll come in high, land on this leg, then they'll start to dip, and then they'll start to come back up here. So, could be back here, skip into it, and then come back up. So the first problem, if you're coming in full speed on your Kong, and you're gonna dip on the second to last step, and immediately try to come back up on your last step, you just don't have time. You don't have time to get low enough and, and have power. So if you're gonna be coming in full speed on your Kong, and you're gonna try, to dip and then come back up in this amount of time, you just, you don't have time. You don't have time to go from your second to last step to your last step and dip and come back up. So that right there, you're already gonna be like this in the air. You're gonna be flailing. The second problem is that you're coming through the air and then you're landing here, you're dipping and rocking forward. Now all your weight's on your front leg. Once your weight's on your front leg, this becomes a one-legged jump. So then you see people take off like this. All the power is coming off the front leg, you're here. And the back leg isn't helping. So now you just cut your power down because you just did a, a one-legged jump when it should be a two-legged jump. And the third problem is that now because you've turned this into a one-legged jump instead of a two-legged jump, uh, instead of using your legs to get all the momentum and all the distance to cover the Kong, it becomes an arm-heavy Kong because you just lost a bunch of power. So now you have to sit on your arms and you have to try to make up for all the power you lost. So then you end up trying to muscle through and you end up leaning your chest forward, putting a bunch of weight on your arms and then having to snap back through and then you lose all your power and you're like this in the air. So the way that it should look is, what should happen is on the third to last step, you should start dipping as you travel into the penultimate, into the second to last step. That way when you land in the second to last step, you're already down and you can start to explode back up. So that's like this. So if you're in, the, if you're in your penultimate, if this is my third to last step, what I want to do is I want to start dipping here, right? So I start dipping back here. If I start dipping back here, I land loaded. I'm already loaded when I hit this leg. And then once this leg hits loaded, I'm just going to carry the momentum until this foot touches the ground. And as soon as this foot touches the ground, I can immediately start to rebound back up. And now I've used all my momentum. I've dropped down. I'm exploding off two legs together. So I come in here. I drop down, explode both legs together. It's a two-footed jump now. And now because both legs have exploded together, I can go further. I can keep all my power, all my speed, keep all my momentum. And on the way up, I can pop straight down off the wall. And when I pop straight down off the wall, now instead of trying to make up the distance by muscling my arms, I can let my legs carry me all the way because you don't want your Kongs to be done with your arms. We'll talk about the arms in a second, but now let's look at these takeoffs just as if, as if it were a plyo because a Kong takeoff is the exact same as a step plyo. So let's look at it as, as a plyo. I'm going to hop into the plyo, dip on the second to last step and try to explode up on the last step and you're going to see it, it just doesn't work but you don't have power because you're putting all your weight on one leg um, and you're losing all your momentum. And then I'm gonna do it the right way where I'm gonna dip coming into the second to last step and then I'll have the power of both legs to explode up. So let's look at that. So if I just hop into it, this is what my plow is gonna look like. So this is my third to last step, hop up. That's my plow. It's terrible, you're not gonna go anywhere that way. Let's do it one more time. I'm gonna go here, step, hop, stay high. That's horrible. You got no power that way. It doesn't work. But if we dip, on the third to last step coming into the second to last step, it's gonna look like this instead. And this one's gonna be much more powerful and you're gonna see it. So I go here, I'm gonna dip on the way in. So I'm gonna dip, and now you have power. You have a ton of power that way. And it's really easy to see the difference. All right, now uh, 
Now I'm gonna do it with a Kong, which is gonna be really awkward doing it the bad way. Uh, for me at least, it feels really, really terrible. You're gonna see what I mean though when I say that when all your weight transfers to that front leg when you dip late, that it becomes an arm heavy Kong and you're gonna see I'm probably gonna be a little bit forward and flailing in the air. And on the second one, when I do it dipping coming into, or when I dip coming into the second to last step, I'm gonna have a bunch of power to revert upwards and I'm gonna be able to get a really nice downward pop on my, on my hands. So that's gonna look like this. So this is if I dip late, if I stay high coming into my second to last step and then try to dip on the second to last step, this is what it's gonna look like. And you can see how weird it was. I even had to kind of drive my heel up on the back and it made me be really hard on my arms. You can probably see my weight come forward and then have to snap back through. And then now look what it's gonna look like if I dip coming into the second to last step, how much more power I'm gonna have and how I'm gonna be able to pop. So you can see instantly there's a difference. The most obvious thing you can see is the body position. Uh, when I dip coming into the second to last step because I'm loaded up and I have time to actually get low and come back up, I can get a nice pop and my body's like this in the air. I get a bunch of height off of it. The first one, you just don't have time to dip that well and you get too much weight on your hands, you don't get that nice pop. The problem if your Kong becomes arm heavy is your arms are just not nearly as powerful as your legs. They're not strong enough to throw you full power to a Kong with the exception of like a standing Kong or maybe like a one to two step Kong where you just don't have momentum with your legs. You want to build power with your legs, build all your momentum. You want your legs to give you all the distance and your arms should be there to pop you straight down. Because for one, if I'm sprinting into a Kong and, I, and I'm using all the power from my legs, if I try to be, if I try to take that force on my arms, my arms are not as strong as my legs. They can't handle all the force that my legs produce. So what's gonna happen if you try to add a couple more inches by muscling your arms is you're gonna hit, you're gonna be slow, you're gonna be heavy, your arms can't pop you, and you're gonna end up pushing, getting over your arms, and then you're gonna be in the air like this, flailing, because they just can't handle the force of, the, of a full sprint that your legs created. But what they can do is if I come in and I get a good dip and I take off both legs and I start to come back up, my arms can pop straight down. And for one, that puts me in this nice landing position where I'm like this and I have a controlled uh, precision landing. And the second thing it does is if I utilize the momentum of my legs and I dip properly and it pops me straight up in the air, I can use my arms to pop down even harder. And now what can happen is, say my, my legs can give me 10 feet of distance level, just relying on my legs. Instead of trying to muscle out another couple inches with my arms by pushing the wall behind me and maybe getting like 10 feet in two inches, what I should do is allow my legs to give me that 10 feet, but then bump myself higher with my arms. And even if I only get like six more inches of height, that means that when I travel 10 feet, instead of being completely level with the takeoff, I'm now six inches above my landing and I have six more inches to fall so I can actually go much further. I might be able to get 10 and a half feet that way. Hopefully what I'm trying to explain here is pretty clear. Sometimes I feel like I just get sidetracked and start talking about all kinds of stuff at once that doesn't go together. Anyway, the next thing is how to dip better. So instead of kind of just hopping into the penultimate, instead of just hopping through the air and trying to dip, what you actually want to do is on your third to last step, you want to drive down and into the ground. You want to push down and into the ground coming into the second to last step so that you can rebound back up. Um, so this is what most people do, or a lot of people do, is they'll be here. And even if they are dipping on time, they do, they'll be in the air and they'll just be lowering the chest, but they'll be high in the air with their feet. So they'll be like this. And that isn't super powerful. Yeah. I'm gonna try to do a better example of that. They'll be lowering their chest if they're trying to dip or picking their feet up to try to get low, but they'll still be hopping through the air. So let me try to demonstrate that. It looks like this from learning in. Now what we want to do is push down. We want to push down and out into the ground. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm actually gonna do one more of each with a bigger run up because I wanna really exaggerate it so you can see what it looks like better. So that's the first one. It wasn't bad, it's still decently powerful, but it can be a lot more powerful because I was actually really high. My feet were up in the air pretty high coming in. On this next one, I'm gonna actually drive down really hard into the ground as I come into it. And now you can see, I don't even have to try, it just rebounds me. It's, it's way more powerful <clears throat> because you're getting your hips low, you're loading yourself up, you're putting a lot of force into the ground and it's just gonna rebound right back up. So this is a pretty, it's kind of hard to explain <coughs> how to do this, 
but basically instead of pushing off your third to last step <coughs> and just trying to get low as you come into the second to last, you actually want to use your hamstrings and your hip flexors to pull you down. And if you've ever done something like a drop squat, which I'll show you how to do right now and you can practice it, you can kind of get the feel for it. So it looks like this. This would be like, if you were doing just a normal squat, you would do this, right? So this is what it's like if you're going through the air and just kind of squatting down or like trying to get low. You're just like this. But if you actually use your hamstrings and your hip flexors to pull you down, you can pull yourself down so fast that your feet come off the ground and that will look like this. So if you do, if you practice that, you can kind of get the feel. That's how it should feel coming into your Kong. You should be pulling yourself down. I'm not picking my feet up off the ground like this. I'm not picking them up and falling. I'm pulling my hips down so hard that my feet come up. So I go here. My feet are just coming up as a byproduct. They're coming up because I'm pulling so hard. So if I'm coming into my Kong, it's the same thing. Instead of being on the third to last step, instead of coming in and just getting low, I actually want to pull myself down. So if I'm here, I actually want to pull myself down into the ground. Use my hip flexors, use my hamstrings, pull. So I'm here, I pull down. And I have a drill that we can go over for that. And I'm gonna show you that right now. It's actually pretty cool. So this drill is actually really cool because you can get a really, really good feel for how this, how you should feel going into your Kong. Uh, but first I'm, I'm gonna go over shin angle a little bit. I don't think you should use this as a cue, like trying to get your shin low going into your Kong, but it's really good to learn and to understand so that if you wanna like look at video of your Kong or look at your positioning, you can kind of see uh, what you're doing and how to fix it. <clears throat> so wherever my shin is pointed, Wherever my shin is pointed on toe off, like when my foot leaves the ground is, is where I'm gonna go. My shin tells me the direction I'm going. So if I'm coming into my penultimate, my, my, if I'm coming into my penultimate and my shin is vertical, then I'm gonna go upwards coming into it and this is what my, my takeoff's gonna look like. And it's not gonna be very powerful because I'm hopping up, I'm coming down, fighting gravity, then I'm trying to go back up again. But if I get, if I'm taking off in this position where my shin's almost parallel to the ground, it's gonna drive me down into the ground. I'm gonna rebound back up. So that's gonna look like this. So you can see, I had to put my foot out in front because my shin is so low. As soon as I pick my foot up, my only option is to drive straight down into the ground and explode back up because my shin is pointing parallel to the ground. It's just gonna push me straight down and out. So you can you can look at your uh, that video of your Kong, and I'm gonna post some, I'm gonna put some of my Kongs in this video so you can really see all these mechanics that I'm talking about. But you can look at video of your Kong, you can look at where's your shin on toe off and you can do this drill or you can do this in different shin positions and feel what it's going to feel like. So you can put yourself here and you can just push off with your shin vertical and see how your, your uh, penal, penultimate is going to feel. And then you can put your shin in this horizontal position and I would drill this for a while so you can get the feel for it and push off here. And you can see how you get all that power. You can see how much power is going on the ground, you can even hear it. It's just a ton of force going in the ground. So once you once you drill that a little bit, uh, on just standing on the curb, just stand on the curb, get your shin down to parallel with the ground, and then pick that front foot, foot up and just drive into the ground, drive into your split foot, and that's what your Kong should feel like coming into it. And then after you do that, you can take a couple steps into it. If you have a curb like this, um, you can take a couple steps. So I'll go back here, and first I'll do a toe off with my shin pretty vertical, so you can see. This is how most people that I'm talking about in this video do it. They skip through the air a little too high and then they come down and have to rebound so it looks like this. And it's going to be very exaggerated on a curve. And it just, I don't feel like I have a lot of power. I don't bounce very high. There's not a lot of force that I can put into the ground because I'm just, I'm really high the whole time. So that's how a lot of people do it that I'm talking about in this video. They kind of stay high on their penultimate coming into the penultimate, they take off with a pretty vertical shin angle, and then they have to fall down, fight gravity, and bounce back up. So now I'm gonna actually drive down into the ground, and if you do it on this curb, you can really feel it, because when I step on the, the edge, I can really drop and push down and out hard into the ground, and it's gonna rebound me really high. So I don't want you to think about shin angle when you're drilling this. Don't think about trying to get your shin low, because I don't think it's a very uh, good cue to think about when you're trying to do Kongs but I want you to think about driving down and into the ground because when you're coming into a Kong, you can think about driving down and into the ground when you're trying to dip. So this is what this is gonna look like. And you can probably just see the power difference. Like, 
it's it's completely different. You get you just you get a huge rebound. There's a ton of force going into the ground. It feels way nicer. So if you drill, if you want to go on the curb, start standing, drop your shin to like parallel, and then just pick that front leg up and drive into the ground so you can see what it feels like. And then once you get a, a hang of that, start doing like a couple steps run up. And when you step off the curb, don't think about the shin angle, but think about driving your body down and into the ground and rebounding back up. And that'll be a really good drill to help you figure this out. One more time, just standing so you can get a better view. Vertical shin angle here. If my shin's vertical. And now parallel shin angle. If I can get low driving into the ground. And you can see a massive difference in power. So once you've drilled going off the curb with a, a low shin angle, and then you've taken a couple steps and tried to drive down into the ground off the curb, like really digging into that corner so you can push down, um, you should have a really good idea of how you need to feel coming into your into your Kong because that's exactly what it should feel like. When you're coming out of that third to last step, you should be driving down and into the ground hard, dropping your hips, pulling your body down as you're coming into that second to last step. You hit that second to last step, last step hits the ground and then you immediately explode back up and you just have so much power. And because your legs are doing all the work, um, both legs are working together, you don't have to become arm heavy and try to muscle your way through. Instead, you can explode up, you can pop with your arms, you can get extra height, and now because you're higher, you can let your legs carry you even further because however far they were gonna carry you before, now you're gonna be a, a couple inches higher when you get there so you can go even further. So once you've done that, once you've drilled off the curb, drilled a couple steps off the curb, now try to do it on the flat ground. So when you're on the flat ground, you're gonna try to do the same thing. And it, again, don't try to think about having a low shin angle. Um, I don't think it's a good cue to think about because you're probably not going to be able to think about when, that when you're coming into a Kong. I mean, maybe if it helps you, you can try it a little bit, but I would prefer to see you think about driving down into the ground and pulling your body down um, as you're coming into that second to last step. So then go to the flat ground and try it like this. Now you're going to go here, take a step, drive down into the ground like that. And then you can take a couple of steps. So I'll start back here. I might take like like one, two. Drive down into the ground. Uh, once you have that figured out, you can apply it to your Kong and your Kong is gonna be so much more powerful that way. I'm gonna do another one. One going this way, one going that way. I'm gonna try to really exaggerate it so you can really see it better. And that's, that's, it, that's how it should feel, just like that. Drive down, and once you hit the ground, if you're driving down to the ground, you're pulling your hips down, you're gonna feel yourself just rebound back into the air. I'm gonna do one with a little bit of a run up, and I'm gonna really try to drive down into my penultimate step. I'm gonna try to pull myself down coming into it and get a really good rebound so you can really see it. It's a bit weird trying to go full power at it without actually doing the Kong, so I'm kind of holding back. It's throwing her off a little bit, I think, but I'm gonna put a, uh, a couple clips in this video and I'm gonna break it down uh, while I show it to you so you can see what it looks like when I'm actually doing full power Kongs. All right, so I'm gonna look at a couple of these Kongs. I'm gonna show you these mechanics a little bit. So this is my uh, third to last step right here. Move that out of the way. So look at this shin angle on toe off right here. It's pretty close to parallel. It's not quite there, but it's pretty close. Um, so that's a really deep shin angle. And the reason is that I am about to drive my body down and into the ground. So right here, my hips are dropping. I'm pulling myself downward. So you can see the second to last step as it plants, I'm already down, I'm already dipped right here. Uh, I'm pretty much eye level with the wall already. I'm gonna maintain this position until as my left foot comes down. And then as my left foot comes down, start to explode up with both legs. And then we're gonna push this one. I pushed a little bit backwards. It's a little bit hard to do it perfect uh, when you're running full sprint, but it's still pretty good. Didn't push back too hard. I got a pretty good downward pop. Could have been a little bit better though. 
There you go on that one. Now this one's actually at Lock Haven. It's the same Kong that I was uh, showing these examples on right here. Nice floaty little Kong. So if we look at the takeoff, and this one isn't quite max power, so let's see how the shin angle changes or if it changes at all. So right here, not quite as low as it was on the other one, I don't think, but it's pretty close to the same. Um, it might be a couple degrees higher than it was on that other one, which was the, the first Kong was max effort. This one's not quite max effort. But you can see here, my hips are starting to drop. I'm pulling myself down as I'm coming into the second to last step. And now you can see right here, um, my second to last step plants. I'm about eye level. I'm going to transfer forward. Both feet are on the ground now, and with both legs, I'm exploding up into the Kong. Now I plant, and I'm going to probably push straight down. Yep, see the, the wrist flick right here? Oh, let me go back to that. So you see this wrist flick? Usually if you see this where you flick straight down, it means you got a really good pop. So my hands push straight down like that, see? And now what's gonna happen is after I pop straight down, as I fly through the air, my arms are just gonna drag behind me as they drag through the air. Um, so my knees come up, see my arms are starting to drag through the air. But look at this nice position you get whenever you pop really well. See how perfect that landing position is? It's so nice for, for doing a pre. And let's watch it fast. You can see how after I pop, I'm going to push straight down. Uh, I'm going to drive down to the ground, push straight down with my arms, and then I'm get, my arms are going to drag behind me just because I'm flying through the air. Yep. And let's look at one more. This one's pretty hard because it's sideways and it's really low. Um, but we can see the same mechanics, even though this one's really low. So since it's low, we got to take off further to get eye level. There's that deep shin angle right there. That one's, that's pretty deep. Um, not quite parallel, but it's almost there. Um, it's definitely not vertical at all. And now you can see, look, the hips are dropping, pulling my body down. Look how low I am already, already. My foot hasn't even touched the ground yet, and I'm almost to eye level. Didn't quite get all the way to eye level because it's a super low Kong. I'm going to roll through. Last leg plants. Now explode with both legs. Hands are coming in one at a time because it's sideways. And then I actually did a pretty good job of pushing down on that one. I had a little bit of a backward push, which is mainly because of how low it is and how fast I was coming in. It's actually really hard to maintain a perfect straight down pop when you're doing like a full power Kong, but it is possible, and whenever you get it, you just fly. But this is pretty close, this is pretty good. You can see, pretty decent pop right there. There's a little bit of backwards push, but it's mostly downwards. And you can see also the body position, because it was mostly downward pop, body position came out pretty good, but if I had gotten a full downward pop, it would have been even better than this.